Hiya folks, it's Kikoskia here, and welcome back to Let's Play Quest for Glory, So You Want to Be a Hero, VGA. I'm gonna call it Quest for Glory 1 VGA from now on. Got quite a long title. When last we left off, we generated our fighter, Derek. Technically he's a hybrid character because he has some climbing skill, but that's later gonna be a fighter skill. But it's not a fighter skill yet. So I suppose we're technically not a fighter, we're a climby fighter. What a guy. We're here in the town of Spielberg, that really could use our help. It's a good thing we turned up when we did. One thing to note about this game, and the series in general, is that there are a number of themes that carry on from game to game. Each game has a direction, a season, an element, and a region of mythology associated with it. And they change as we move on. This is the first game, and it has the direction of north, the element of earth, the season of spring, and Germanic mythology. We're going to be seeing a lot of Germanic mythological creatures and characters. Now let's look around first at our HUD for interacting with things. This is walk, this is look, this is use, this is talk, this is an icon you wouldn't have seen before in other Sierra point-and-click adventure games. This has a lot of things that are Quest for Glory specific, like this is setting us walking, that's running, sneaking, resting, our stat sheet, what time it is, it is currently midday on day one, and also the tick. Also I like the fact that uh, you can use this uh, question mark to look at things like, say kids, what time is it? Time to check for time. Now we are going to do the typical point-and-click adventure game thing of looking at everything. There's not much to look at. The handsome statue seems to be watching you. This ugly statue seems to be watching you. The sign of the scissors above the door indicates that the building contains a barber shop. There's a sign on the door of the barber shop. It says, out to lunch. Huh, interesting. The sheriff's office doubles as a jail for the town and a hangout for the sheriff and the goon. Schultz appears to be an affable old coot, content to smoke his pipe. There's a hardness behind his eyes, however, that gives you reason to believe that he's no pushover. There's more than a hint of ogre about this strange and bulky character. He seems cheerful, though. If this is the town's water supply, no wonder nobody ever comes here. Oh dear. It's an empty jail cell. Fortunately, you're on the outside, at the moment. You see a cheery, inviting glow of a hearth fire within the inn. The sign reads, Hero's Tail Inn. Also, that's the way further into town. There's also a way further into town that way. Now, we have our inventory. There are things here. We have four gold and ten silver. That's 0.2 pounds. Yes, carry capacity is important in this game. Five food rations that each weigh 0.3 pounds. We have a broadsword that weighs 7 pounds. Leather jerkin that weighs 20 pounds. And a shield that weighs 12 pounds. Let's have a conversation with uh, the Sheriff. Now, originally in the EGA uh, game, you had the text box where you could type in, ask about X, ask about Y. Considering this is a VGA game, you can't do that, but still learning about things is important, so we have this menu. We can ask about all kinds of things, like his name. I am Sheriff Schultz Meiderson, and this is Otto von Goon, my assistant. Now we can ask about Otto. Otto is a big help to me. He's very smart for a goon. His prisoners only suffer a few broken bones when he grabs them. It took a bit of doing to teach him to bring prisoners back alive, but he hardly ever forgets now. Yay? It's simple. When someone breaks the law and we catch them, we hold them prisoner. Makes sense. Let's talk about, uh, the town. This town is named after the Barons of Spielberg. It used to be a lively place to be, before the brigands came and drove all the business away. You can find a place to stay at the inn next door. You can learn about jobs available in the guild hall down the street. If you're interested in magic, you should visit the magic shop. There's still plenty to do and see here in Spielberg. What about the Baron? Baron Stefan keeps mostly to himself at his castle north of here. We haven't seen him here in town for years. Magic. Just next to the inn is a small magic shop. The owner, Zara, will let you in if you have some abilities in that area. She's a strange one, all right? We have no abilities, we are not going in there. Go talk to the innkeeper. He will help you there. And we can't talk to the pavement, but we can talk about the guild hall. The guild hall is in the southwest corner of town. If you're looking for work, that's a place to go. 
What about monsters? The monsters come down from the mountains every winter, but they're usually gone by now. The Baron just doesn't have enough men to handle them. Wolfgang is the one to talk to about monsters. He's had a lot of experience with them. Who's Wolfgang? Wolfgang down in the guild hall is the one to talk to about monsters. He's had a lot of experience with them. Fair enough. What about the brigands? There's a whole band of brigands hiding out somewhere in the mountains just around us. They robbed a merchant last week. Got a fair amount of treasure, I hear. Let's talk about the merchant. The one who was robbed. He's staying at the inn, I believe. Ooh. Oh, careful, Otto! Hey! Good one. Let's talk about the treasure. Obtaining treasure involves putting yourself in danger. If you're brave, foolish, or lucky, you might get some treasure. I want to also get some. Ooh, actually, I could, uh, talk about danger. My friend, this world's filled with dangers. Sometimes I think it might be better to choose your danger, rather than sitting around waiting for it, as I seem to do. But enough of this philosophical rambling. I'm content enough to be Sheriff of Spielberg. Let's talk about adventure. You'll need to talk to the Baron about that, or go ask Wolfgang down to the Guild Hall, which is just down the street. Oh, maybe you're going to be a hero? Well, we could surely use one around here, what with all the brigands. We've spoken about the Baron. Uh, adventure, town, monsters, I think we've... Oh, the mountain! You should know, you came down from there. And that's it. You get no response from Otto. Okay, let us, uh... Use this door and go into the inn. The inn seems like a good place to go and check out. Greetings! I am a hero to be! Ah, hello! Welcome, welcome, traveler, to the Hero's Tale Inn. I am Shamin at your service. May you find what you seek here. Hello! You see a small cat like creature known as a catter. You've heard that catters are common in the southern deserts. That's where the second game is based. A well-fed fire purrs happily in the fireplace. This looks like an alpine inn, complete with dishes on the wall and heavy beams on the ceiling. It is pleasantly warm, and the aroma of strange spices fills the air. The tables look like they have been rough cut from some of the local pines. Collector Collection of designer plates loaned to the Heroes Inn by Mary Meister. You look closely and read Genie's Lamp for Rent. Inquire in Quest for Glory 2. Trial by Fire for details. Oh, it's just another cheap plug. Sierra! This is the brighter candle. This is the idiot half-brother candle. It's only half bright. The odour of cooking food wafts through the curtains. A door to some other room. Perhaps the proprietor can tell you what's in there. Or maybe not. This authentic Polynesian mask is far, far from home. One of Hiram Plugmeister's double-barreled spittoons. Let's have a conversation with you. Very good food, very good drink, finest in town. Sit, rest. You will be served by my Shima. Let's talk about uh, you. I am Shamin, a poor unfortunate, forced to seek a fortune in this cold land far away from my homeland and my Kata people. We are a race of desert dwellers and wanderers of the endless sands. Let's talk about the endless sands. A land of golden sand and tall mountains, a city of tall buildings and winding streets. A place where Kata can bask in the sun as they sell things in the bazaar. It is our homeland and a place we long to be. What about the homeland? We live far to the south in the desert lands of Shapir. Someday we may yet return there. What about, uh, let's talk about... Merchant. My friend Abdullah is recovering from his robbery last week. He should be here around supper time. Robbery? Alas, the brigands stole all of Abdullah's wealth and mine own when they robbed his caravan. Now I will be forced to stay in this cold, wet land. Brigands? I know little about them except they must be wealthy now. Wealth? I hoped to return to my homeland with the prophets Abdullah, Shima, and I would make from the caravan. Now I fear we will remain here unless someone deals with the brigands and returns our stolen trade items. I'll see what I can do. In my homeland, a caravan is the only way to travel from city to city. What about Shima? Shima is my beloved, and she can cook and keep an inn as few others. When she dances, there is true magic. If we ever return to Shapir... Then she will again dance. Um, let's 
talk about... Il. This is the Hero's Tale Inn, where Shima and I will be delighted to serve you. The softest and safest of beds, the richest and finest of foods awaits you. You have but to command. Um, town. Spielberg is a sad place for an innkeeper, for few travellers visit because of the brigands. And that brings up Otto and the Sheriff. This is a cold land for a catter. He comes in with his wife sometimes for food. He is very wise and generous. Otto, there is no end to the food that that one can eat. Let us sit down, shall we? And talk to Shima. You take a seat at the table nearest the fire. There is a clap. And here comes Shima. I am Shima. Allow me to serve you, wanderer from afar. Do you wish food or drink? I wish conversation, predominantly. I am Shima, which means, in the words of the Kata, She of the Dance. Let's talk about your homeland. Our homeland is far to the south. It is called Shapir. Shapir is where we Kata come from. It is warm and glowing, and the sun is always bright. Talk about the Kata. Kata are a quiet, gentle people. Talk about dance! It is true I love to dance, but my soul cannot fly so far from home. Basically, wait until the sequel, if we get there. Let's talk about uh, questions. It is Shamin who is the speaker for the house, for I have much work to do to serve you. If you wish to know more about such things, then you should speak to him. What about the merchant? Abdullah will always be our guest and friend. Uh, I'll talk about Abdullah. Abdullah, too, is from the land of Shapir. What about robbery? Abdullah will be honoured to tell you of that. Uh, not much else really I want to talk about, so that's good. To whom are you trying to speak? Myself! We can't speak to ourselves here. Though we can interact with ourselves. Let's interact with ourselves. We've seen the water guy. What about. You do a quick equipment check. Everything seems to be in place. Mumble, mumble, overworked. The pain, no control over my life. Oh, don't you know it, Derek? We'll be back sometime later. That is a hefty door. Can we go in here? It is locked. Darn it. Okay. Oh, also, before we continue, raise the detail. Raise that to maximum, because there is no reason to not have it at max. Right now, not been important, but it might be important going forward. So, over here we go. You can smell apples as you approach this corner. Good day, and welcome to Spielberg. Would you like to buy some of my nice, fresh fruit or vegetables? Ooh! Ah, fresh air. You are in the northeast section of town. The buildings are all brightly painted, and the air is filled with the fragrance of apples. This appears to be a market street. You see a charming young centaur with the upper torso of a teenager and the body of a filly. The scales are used to weigh the vegetables. There are a variety of vegetables for sale, and the shopkeeper is a centaur. It is a simple but prosperous looking general store. It looks like it might provide some staples that would prove useful to a traveller, such as if an adventuring party asks them to join ask you to join them. The white picket fence surrounds a small yard. You see a nicely furnished living room through the window. Let's have a chat, shall we? What's your name? I am Hild, daughter of Heinrich Ferde Ferdem. That is a long complicated sounding name, the farmer. I probably messed that up too. My father is Heinrich. Fair enough. What about your mother? My mother has been dead for three years now. I still miss her. I'm sorry to hear that. Farmer? My father is a fine farmer. And let's talk about your farm. We have some land to the north of town. It isn't very big, but we grow many things. You should be here during harvest time. Then you would see many fruits and vegetables. Let's talk about, um... This one? Thank you, but my father thinks I am too young. He would not permit it, but perhaps next year. So we do farmer... And farm. We have some land to the north. It is very big. We grow many things. Is there anything else I could learn here? I don't think so. Okay. Ah, yes, something else here, though. Let's talk about the market. This is where I sell things from my farmers for my father's farm. Let's talk about uh, vegetables. 
We have many kinds of fresh vegetables for sale today. There are carrots, rutabagas, parsnips, potatoes right from the ground at five for a silver. They're very good for you. We also have some apples. Uh, let's talk about the apples. There's still some apples left from last season in the barrel. You may buy ten for a silver, since they are so small. Ooh! Carrots are my favorite vegetable. They are so crisp and sweet. What about rutabagas? Rutabagas keep well over the winter months. The only thing we can really buy are apples, it would seem. Parsnips can be made into a tasty pie. Turnips. Turnips are good if you cook them in stews. What about brigands? They have twice robbed my father of his money, and they have tried to steal our food during this winter. That is because we farm outside of town. The brigands would not dare try that in town. The sheriff would stop them fast. Talk about the sheriff. Our sheriff is very brave. He told me so himself. He's so humble, too! Many robbers ran up to my father as he trotted back to town. My father tried to fight, but they hurt him badly. Then they ran away to the southwest. Southwest, eh? Hmm, you know what? You know what? Let's get our money. I cannot... I'll buy some apples. You carefully select ten of the best apples in the barrel and pay Hild a silver piece. We have apples! You have ten small apples. Each weighs 0.2 pounds. You know what? I will buy those apples and I will probably never use them. Now let's go into the dry goods store and see what's going on. This looks like a dry goods store, but it smells like a musty library. The stove feels nice on such a crisp day. Behind the counter and on the shelves, there are a variety of items for sale. The shopkeeper appears to ignore you while he reads a book. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't notice you coming in. My, you look like an adventurer. We don't see too many around here. The brigands tend to get rid of most adventurers before they make it to town. I do try to stock some things adventurers could use. I actually would rather be an adventurer than a shopkeeper, you see. My items are probably pretty ordinary, though. You probably already have most of them if you've done any adventuring at all. I might not. We have a door to the back storage room. Bright sunlight streams in through the open window. Looks like a standard broadsword behind that counter. Looks like oversized shield suitable for ogres, goons, and frost giants. You see bottles, jugs, and canned goods more useful to a housewife than a hero. The jars of beets and sauerkraut look like they were canned locally. There are barrels of flour and salt next to the counter. There also seems to be jars of pickled pig's feet, linen cloth, and lots of other things of which you have very little interest. The proprietor's teapot. It's a matador's red cape, recently repaired after he waved it in front of a miner's hall. Bad idea. The barrels appear to be filled with flour and salt and look rather heavy. The clothes come in two sizes, dwarf and goon. I am neither. The stove is burning merrily away, making the shop seem almost too warm. There are some wooden poles leaning against the wall. Now, I've played D&D. Ten-foot poles, very useful. A large, lumpy sack sits in the wall, by the wall. None of the clothes look like they fit. The shopkeeper is a small, balding man who wears glasses. He looks as if he can barely lift the book he's reading. Judging from his clothes, he's fairly well-to-do. Let's have a conversation. And talk about his name. Why, that's me, Casper. Adventurer? I always wanted to be an adventurer. I read about them all the time. The book I was just reading is about adventuring. Let's talk about the book. Oh, this book, it's about an adventurer who's trying to become a hero. The title is Quest for Glory, A Hero's Death. Thanks, game. Really, really big vote of confidence there. Equipment. Unfortunately, I have only standard weapon and equi weapons and equipment. I carry daggers and chain armor. Maybe someday I'll be able to carry magic ones, though. I hope so. Ah, the use of a dagger is a most skillful art. Actually, this particular weapon is longer than most, but still easily concealable. A bargain at 20 silvers. Chain. You can get really good protection from my chainmail armor. It's very heavy, though, and I would have to charge you 500 silvers for it. Yeah, we can't afford that. Adventuring rations aren't the tastiest food in the world, but they will keep you healthy and alert as you go along. A pack of 10 rations will cost you just 5 silvers. Useful. It's a very good idea to carry an empty flask or two in case you want to pick up a liquid or something else that needs container. Our flasks are a great bargain at two silvers each. You know what? I'll buy one of those in a bit. Brigands. I don't like to talk about other people behind their backs. But you'll talk about the sheriff, I imagine. The sheriff and Otto protect this town. The sheriff used to be a real adventurer, you know. Unlike you, you're a fake. And Hild. Hild sells fine produce for a reasonable price. You know what? Gonna buy that 
flask. Here you are. Thank you for your patronage. Excellent. Good purchase was made. And so, when we come back, folks, it is still probably midday. Is, is it midday? I will actually check. Uh, no, it is mid-afternoon. Time has passed. Time has definitely passed. And so, we will head this way next, and then once we've done everything there, we will go out from town and engage in some skill increases. Very important thing to do. Gotta get some skill ups. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later. Is this the beginning of a great heroic legend? Or are we just going to die at the first opportunity? Probably both, because we can save the game. Probably both. Later.